So what we are going to see now is an important uh, property, uh, the margin property. What is margin? Or else we'll also take a look at what is the CSS box model. We'll see, take a look at this and then we'll go to float the next uh, property. So we'll talk about CSS box model first. What is this box model for an element? See, I'll have this uh, um, image. The source for this is from my images folder or something caption.jpg I use. And uh, the alternate text is it's a table. So this is the uh, thing, right? And uh, let me have a border for this. So you have the content first and we have a border surrounding the content. How will you give a border for this image? You just go with image and then you give border uh, two pixels, uh, solid blue, something like this. So is it, uh, I should put this. This is not working. Okay, the issue is I have not linked the style sheet to my HTML page. <laughs> you should have warned me. Oh, why it's not working? I thought I ended up with something new again. <laughs> Good. So test.css, let me link it up and let's take a look at this uh, thing. Let's see if it works now. Yeah, now you can see the border, right? So you have the content, you surround the content with a border. What is padding? Padding is the space surrounding the content within the border. So if I give a 20 pixels padding, so you can see here, this is padding space, content, then padding space, then border. Now what is this margin? Margin is the distance between two elements. You can define the space outside the border. So let me go, go with another image. Let's, uh, let's go with another image. Uh, let's or else let's have some text. Let's go with some text. Let's generate some text here. Now you're able to see there is this border padding content. Now if I go with margin, say I'll give margin of say 50 pixels. So what is this margin? It's the margin outside the border. So surrounding the element. So this is the CSS box model. You have the content, you have the padding space, then you have the border coming up. Margin is something that surrounds the element outside the border. So now you are able to see this, there's a border here. So you call this to be the CSS box model. Are you not clear with what is a margin? Say again, when you talk about margins, you can go with margin left. When you have something, you can always go with left margin. You can go with the right margin like that. You can have right margin, you can have top margin. So you can, you can just have margins wherever you want. Margin top, margin right, margin left, margin bottom. So this is margin. Now I'll give margin of some 20 pixels. So let's say this is my profile page and this is my photograph and I've written something about me. Now the problem is this text is not uh, next to this image. What shall I do to make this test wrap around that image? For this, we have to use the property called float. So you go to the image, you float it, float it to the left. When you float it to the left, you can see the text now wraps around the image. See, I'll just create more dummy text so that you'll be able to see how it wraps around. How to create more dummy text, L-O-R-E-M in Visual Studio creates more dummy text for us. Okay, so now you see how it wraps around. See more. can see that, see? So what's happening here is the text wraps around the image. This is float left. What happens when you float it to the right? Okay, float right. Just move to the right. Now this text looks very ugly. Uh, what shall we do for the text? You can go with the text align, maybe for the body, you can give uh, text align, justify. Now, justify. So this 
So it's a very useful property. You can place the images, float left, float right, or else you can put that inside a division and position it. So you can do a lot of things. So have you understood CSS box model, margin, float left, float right? There's one more thing. There are many things, but float none is also there. Float none will go back to the initial stages. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this entire content inside a division. Let's put this inside a parent element. Let's go with uh, this body. Let's put this entire content inside a division. I have a parent for this. Let's let me show you what happens. Division. Let me close this. Even closing it automatically. Okay, now I have put that inside a division and I will just style this division. Let me style this division. Uh, what I will do is I'll have some height and width for this division. Say height to be uh, 200 pixels and width to be 200 pixels. So this is the division. See, I'll also have some background color for my division. Background color is aqua. Actually, this is the division, but the content is overflowing outside the division. So for this, what we can do is we can handle overflow like this. Whenever content overflows, you go with overflow. Uh, you can go with the scroll, say overflow X. If it's overflowing in the Y axis, then you can go with overflow Y scroll. So I'll go with scroll here. So it's going to enable scrolling for you. Don't have a scroll bar. Likewise, you can also have overflow X to be scrolling. So whenever your division overflows, you have to enable the scroll bars. You may load an entire web page into a division. The web page may not uh, fit in, you know, so most of the contents will be hiding. So you, you need scroll bars to be enabled. So you can very well specify whether your X uh, scroll bar should be enabled or Y scroll bar should be enabled. Or else you can just give overflow scroll. That will enable things. There's one more thing, overflow Y auto. That is whenever it overflows, when the content overflows, you can, you will automatically see a scroll bar. So these are some of the properties. Now let's talk about Z index. So we'll have some div elements. Let me delete everything. The next concept we are going to take a look at is Z index in CSS. Very important property, Z index in CSS. So what is the use of this? That's what we are going to see. Let's go to test.css, select all, delete, save. Now, let's have divisions. Let's say there's a div element. And I'll call this with a class E1. This is element one. Let me have another div element. I'll call this with a class E2. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply some styles for these divisions. So we'll access E1. We will Position it absolute from the top. Let's move it five pixels from the left. We'll move it five pixels. And then we'll have an height and width for a division, say 200 pixels to be the height and width to be 200 pixels. Maybe we'll have some background color for a division. Let's go with background color. Let's say it's red. So this is our division. Let's style our next division, E2. Again, we'll have some height and width, say 200 pixels, and width to be 200 pixels. And we'll also position this. Uh, we'll have a background color, and then we'll position it. So background color, we're going to have it as aqua. Now we'll position this. Position this absolute. See, from the top, I will position it 5 pixels and from the left, I will position this some 100 pixels. So where this division to occurs, let's see. 
there are two developments the first one is positioned here the next one is positioned 100 pixels from the left and 5 pixels from the top so it's overlapping on the e1 so which is overlapping on uh, which division this aqua is overlapping on the red if i want red to overlap an aqua what i should do is i should give some z index value so i'll give z index and then i'll give the value to be 3 and for this z index i'll give a value to be 2 greater the value then it will be on the top you can also have values in negative say you can give minus 1 minus 2 you can also have values in positive say this is very important when you are using z index you should position the element first you have to use the position property position the element then you have to apply z index or else your results may not be correct very important learning i had which i am sharing with you you if you don't position your elements you are going to give some z index values you will be getting some results which may not be the desirable results are you clear with z index so you can stack up elements one over the other you can decide which one should be on the top by preferring a appropriate z index value so higher the value then it will be higher on the stack are you clear with z index um, maybe we have one more thing called box shadow i love this division which is e1 the class is e1 for this division say if i want to apply some box shadow for this division the property is box shadow so select box shadow and then you can mention the parameters say i'll give 10 pixels 10 pixels to be the shadow and then what should be the color of the shadow i can give some color let me select aqua to be the color and uh, when you refresh this you'll be able to see the shadow you also have another value i'll give a gray color shadow or a black color shadow so it's visible for you so that is the box shadow and if you increase the number of pixels here if i give 20 pixels and 20 pixels your shadow is going to increase there's one more value you can give to your shadow that is the spread value say if i give some 10 pixels of spread value you'll be able to get this kind of an effect spread effect there's one more thing that you can do you can say that you can just rotate the shadow effect like giving inset when i give inset you'll be able to see the shadow reverses you'll also be able to give multiple shadows let me remove this uh, inset you'll also be able to give multiple shadows like this you give a comma now i want to give 10 pixels 10 pixels and then i want to have an aqua shadow for my box now if i refresh this it's 20 20 and 10 10 maybe i'll make it 5 pixels and 5 pixels that's why it's hiding behind it so now you are able to see a box with multiple shadows one is black another one is aqua you can also reverse it for the aqua so you are able to get a different effect now you can change the border radius say border radius 50 percent if you change the border radius save the file and refresh this you'll be able to get a shape like this so you can very well change the shape of your div by using border radius what is this display property and why we use that in CSS? So let's go with some text in the body of my page. So I'm just I'm just generating some text here and let me delete all the CSS from the thing. So this is the text. If I include a paragraph within my text, say if I include a paragraph here, I just open and close a paragraph. I will put my name Satish CJ here. So this is a paragraph, right? So how the output is going to change? It's going to change like this because we have said it's a paragraph. 
I don't want this to start in a separate line. I want to just start it in line. Let's, let's say I'm accessing the paragraph element here. What display does is say the paragraph, I want to display it in line. That's it. What it does to the output. You can see earlier the paragraph was taking a new line. It was taking a new block, right? Now it is inline. That is, you can make a paragraph inline. So what is this? The text Satish is now inline. If I say display block, I can make that to be a block. Okay, when I say display block, it's going to display it as a block like this. What is the difference between display block and display inline? When you display something as block, you can set the height and width for the block. So I can give the height, height to be some 200 pixels and width to be some 200 pixels. So now this is block, right? So it's going to take up some height and width. So the width is 200 pixels, height is 200 pixels. If you apply a background color for the paragraph, you'll be able to see this aqua. So you'll be, able to, you'll be able to specify height and width for something that is displayed as block. Whereas when you display something as inline, you cannot specify the height and width. Say inline, if I say inline and then refresh it, you cannot specify height and width for something that is inline. So what we have seen display inline, display block, there's one thing called inline block. What is this inline block? Inline block is it is inline as well as it is a block. You see it is inline. It is within that line, but it's also a block. You can adjust the height and width for the element. So you'll be able to see this. You no, know, you'll be seeing display block, display inline, display inline block. When you are working with uh, navigations using CSS, you would have used all these properties. So that's why you know, it's important to understand all these properties. Is it clear?